I want to do a low buy year in 2024, but I also want to stay true to myself and things that I love. So I have created a rule list for me to stick to, and I'm going to share it with you guys. My first rule is do not fail. And what do I mean by this? Obviously, nobody intentionally fails, but this is something that I have control over. I can choose what I spend my money on. Therefore, if I choose to spend money on something that I'm not supposed to spend money on in 2024, that means I am choosing to fail. I am going to go ahead and delete all of my apps, all my shopping apps. I'm going to stay off of Instagram as much as possible. And I'm also going to unsubscribe to all my emails so I don't see the sales that are going on. Rule number two is a big one, and that is the fact that I can only buy three luxury bags total in the year of 2024. This is going to be extremely hard for me because as you guys know, I absolutely love my luxury bags. Now, some of you guys might be saying, Melissa, this is not a low buy, allowing yourself to buy three bags. But for me and my lifestyle, it really, really is. I think the last few years, I definitely went overboard and I want to scale it back. But the three bags that I'm allowing myself to purchase are actually four very special occasions for me. And those occasions are my wedding anniversary slash Mother's Day. Those are pretty close and they are two dates that are very, very precious to me. There is nobody more important to me in my personal life than my husband and my children. The other occasion is going to be my birthday, which I feel like everybody should celebrate themselves and celebrate their birthday. And lastly, for Christmas. So other than those three dates, I am not allowed to buy any type of luxury items. Rule number three is that I can repurchase empties. So what do I mean by that? If I have a mascara that has run out, I can go ahead and repurchase a mascara. Now, if I have a mascara that runs out and I have another option for a mascara, I have to use the other option first before I buy anything else. So this is going to stand true for anything. So that's shampoo and conditioner, that's any makeup items or any skincare items. Outside of my empties, I cannot repurchase anything. So I cannot buy something just because it Merit came out with a new lipstick that I absolutely love. That can wait till 2025. Rule number four is a big one and it's something that's going to be really difficult for me and that is that I cannot purchase any at all shoes, clothing, accessories, perfume, or makeup. Those are the five items that I absolutely cannot purchase unless it's an empty. So if I run out of my favorite perfume and I have another one, I cannot repurchase it. I have to wait till all my perfume is gone. If I run out of a makeup item that I don't have another one of, let's say I ran out of my bronzer, I can purchase it, but I can't purchase just for the sake of shopping. Now with clothing, I have plenty of jeans, I have plenty of dresses, I have coats, I have jackets, I have everything I need. So I can't purchase any clothing at all for 2024 and I can't purchase any shoes either. You guys, I just noticed that I completely skipped over rule number five for myself and that is that all money towards vacation, outings, date nights with my husband and events with my kids is allowed. So if my husband and I want to go on a date night, we are allowed to go on date nights. If I want to spend time with my kids and I want to take them out, I am allowed to do that. Again, I'm going to try to set a budget for it so I don't go overboard. Since I'm not shopping, I'll have more money to go out, which is actually one of my intentions. I want to do more quality time and have more money to do fun quality events. And shopping is just getting in the way of that. So we need to get rid of the shopping. Sorry, I've got a hair. But I also don't want to go overboard. I don't want to say, oh, I have $700 in my spending account. Let me go ahead and go spend that on every single month on going out. So outings, date nights, occasions and events with my kids are totally okay, but we're going to keep it not at a minimum. I don't want to say a minimum, but we're going to keep it at bay. Number six is the fact that I get my nails and hair done. I get my nails done every three weeks and I get my hair done every three to four months. I'm going to continue to do that. That is a part of my daily bills. It is budget daily, monthly bills. It is budgeted into my budget. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow myself to still do the self-care things that I really, really enjoy. My hair costs me about $140 every three to four months. I don't feel like that's outrageous. And my nails cost me $40 every three weeks. So I am allotting room in my budget to do that. 
Rule number seven is gifts. I am a huge gift giver. If you are somebody important in my life and your birthday's coming up, you better believe at least a month ahead of time, I cannot wait and I am thinking about what I'm gonna purchase for you. But I have decided for 2024, and this is a big one for me, I am not purchasing any gifts for any friends or family outside of my immediate family. That consists of my kids and my husband, maybe my best friend, I'm still on the, the fence of whether I'm going to buy her something because I do consider her to be a part of my immediate family. But other than that, I am not purchasing any gifts for anybody. Number eight is actually what am I going to do with the remainder money that I have managed to save by not spending money. And I have chosen that I'm going to split it. So what I'm going to do is at the end of every single month, let's say I have $300 left over that I didn't spend. I'll use $150 worth of that to pay towards any type of debt I have until my debt is gone. I actually don't have very much debt. And then I'll use $150 to put into savings. I think that's a really good way for me to see my savings grow and be really excited about that and also handle any small debt that I may have. And number nine is that I am not gonna buy any home items unless there's something that's already in the works. For example, my husband and I do plan on doing our floors very soon, which I am so excited about. We also plan on repainting the interior of our home and getting new um, shutters and blinds for our home. Outside of that, I cannot purchase anything for the home unless it's something that needs to be replaced. For example, my microwave has broken. My kids have broken the handle off of our microwave. So I do think that we would replace the microwave if it was 2024. Of course, it's 2023, so I could do whatever I want. But if something like that happens in 2024, of course, I'm going to replace it. Now, if it's something that I can live without, for example, I have two cutting boards. If one of my cutter, cutting boards were to break, I can live without buying that. I have another one. So I'm really limiting what I'm purchasing for the home other than, the, other than those big ticket items that I just shared with you. Doing a low buy year when you have kids can be really, really tricky. So I did go ahead and create some rules revolving around this, especially because if you are a shopper like I am, where you really, really enjoy shopping and you're trying to cut back from your shopping, a lot of times in my instance, what I will do is I will stop shopping for myself and then I will transfer my shopping to my kids. So I will over shop for them. That way I'm still getting the endorphins and dopamine of shopping, but it's for somebody else and it makes me feel less guilty than I normally would. We're trying to stay away from that. So the first rule that I have created that revolves around my kids is that they will continue to get their allowance. Their allowance is for them and we actually do things a little bit different in our household. They get a certain amount every single week, but I make them save it for six months. So every January they get to spend all of their allowance from the last six months and then every June they get to spend it. They also get to choose whether or not they save it. So if they want to save it until the next six months, then they can, but they can't say in January, oh, I don't want to spend it. And then February comes around, they want to spend it. No, 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 no. You have January to decide. And if you don't spend it in January, it gets saved all the way until June. So my kids will continue to get their allowance. Number two is that I'm not going to change the way I do things for my kids. For example, I usually buy my kids new clothes for every season. They also get new clothes for the school year. They get new shoes for school. They get new shoes middle of the year as well. And they get new, uh, new backpacks, new school supplies at the beginning of the school and then all holidays. So they will still be celebrated for all holidays. They will still get clothes for all the occasions that they normally get clothes. I don't want this no buy year to affect them at all. And that means negative or positive. So I don't want to over shop for the kiddos, but I also don't want to take anything away from them. And the third rule for my kids is if they need something, they will get it. For example, they need a new uh, notebook for school. They're going to get a new notebook. They need new underwear. They're going to get new underwear. All of my kids' necessities are going to be met. I just don't want to overdo it or go overboard. And that's why I've put in place these rules for my kids. So what does this look like for YouTube and my YouTube channel? 
I am still going to go ahead and talk about luxury bags because you guys know how much I love them. I'm still going to have three unboxings. I'm up in the air on whether or not I'm going to allow myself to buy any luxury SLGs. I'm In three months, I'm going to reevaluate these rules and come back to you guys and see if there's anything that needs to be changed. But I think that maybe one or two SLGs may be included in this as well. But I'm also going to start this as a series. So every single month, I'm going to come back to you guys. I'm going to share with you guys the exact dollar amount that I was able to save at the end of every month. Now, I'm not going to break it back down. I'm not going to tell you guys how much money I make. I'm not going to tell you how much I spend on bills or anything like that. But I am going to share with you guys how much I was able to save by cutting back on my shopping every single month. I'm also going to share with you guys if I made any mistakes. Did I buy something that I shouldn't have? Or did I stick to it? And how hard was it? What was my mental state during that month? And lastly, I'm going to share with you guys every single month if there were any empties and I needed to repurchase an item, I'm going to share that with you. If there was an item like, let's say it is the time frame where I'm allowed to buy a luxury bag, I'm going to share that with you guys. If there was something that my kids needed and I had to purchase something for them, I'm going to share that with you guys as well. Now, the reason why I feel like this is important is because let's say there's a month let's say it's my birthday month my birthday's in september i usually buy a bag in august so i'll probably buy a bag in august august is also when my kids start up school so i'm anticipating the month of august is going to be a spending month for me even in my low buy year now with that being said i'll probably get those dopamines and i'll feel really good in august so I wonder how I'm going to feel in September. So I think it's important to share with you guys if I bought something, especially if it's something that's lauded for me to buy, how did I feel the month afterwards? Did it mess with me a little bit or was it something that was easy to go right back to not purchasing? I hope that you guys will follow along on my low buy year. If you guys are doing a low buy year as well, please keep me updated as well. I would love to have somebody to piggyback off of. I've loved, I would love to cheer you on and I would love for you guys to cheer me on as well. If you guys want to be a part of this journey, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. That way we can be on this low buy journey together.